I am Sarah Longfield with Guitar World. Happy to be with you today. Well, Sarah, thank you for officially calling me by my proper name, James. And uh, those that know me might know me by JC, but I'll take James because my mother would be proud. <laughs> well, great. Nice to hear it. Um, I'm here today at the Gibson Garage. And could you tell me a little bit about Gibson Garage? Yeah, I mean, a couple of years ago when we were putting the band back together at Gibson, we were like, okay, and people would come to Nashville and go, oh man, where can we check out Gibson? And we would tell them all these awesome places for sure, or they would drive out to our crafteries and a nice sign would say, we don't do tours yet. And so then we just imagined like, wh where could we build the experience for Gibson? Of course it had to be Nashville. So we moved our headquarters here in Cummins Station right in downtown. And then we started looking at the space and said, wow, like what could the Gibson experience look like? So it started about a year and a half, almost two years ago. And we said, how could we have a place where people can explore the past, present and future Gibson, play all the guitars and then actually shop for some cool stuff. And so that was the starting point for the Gibson garage. That's awesome. I honestly, I can't think of anything like it. Um, being here is a very surreal experience. Yeah. Do you think you could tell me a little bit more about Gibson Gibbs? Yeah, so we've had a foundation for many years and it's done some good things, but like a lot of foundations over time, they sort of, the purpose gets a little diluted and, and the spectrum gets wide in terms of how you support and what you support. Lots of good causes, but we said, let's reimagine Gibson Foundation to be Gibson Gibbs. And it was exactly two years ago today uh, at the Summer NAM show where we declared that Gibson Gibbs is all gonna, is gonna be all about giving the gift of music one guitar at a time. And we said, we're gonna give a thousand guitars for the next thousand days. And 500 days into it, we'd already given out 2,500 guitars for all the right reasons. Sometimes it was due to reacting to a tornado or a, even a bomb that went off in Nashville when people lost guitars, right through to amazing programs like Notes for Notes, Music Cares, um, empowering artists and during tough times and challenging times. So Gibson Gibbs was really all about the gift of music one guitar at a time. Awesome, awesome. It's so great to hear. What's next for Gibson Gibbs? Well, now, two years later, we're sort of ahead of where we thought, and there's amazing energy, and we're supporting amazing causes. One is it goes global. So it started in Nashville, then it goes across America, and now we've got uh, Gibson Gibbs programs all over the world. But also, we have a lot of other amazing brands, like Epiphone, Mesa Boogie, we have KRK, and we also have Kramer. So guess what? We're going to see Mesa Mission, and we're yeah. going to drive that. We're going to see KRK Cares with a K. We're going to see Kramer Cares with a K. And we're also going to uh, be really thinking about Epiphone Empowered. And so those are all going to be specific programs under Gibson Gives, which is really trying to drive that sort of notion of contribution to music and the next generation of music as well. And, uh, and if the last two years is an indicator that we can make a difference, then the future is bright for Gibson Gives. Yeah, definitely. I think that's incredible. Can you tell me a little bit about the Tempo program? Yeah, I mean, that was a very specific one. And it's, um, you know, it started a little dark side, I must yeah. admit. And, uh, you know, and through music and through certain challenges, and especially during the past year and a half, a lot of musicians were there were more questions and answers and often there were some dark side situations where this overdose dynamic is very real and uh, we've had colleagues and we've had band members uh, ha have either directly or indirectly had impact there and so we thought how could we empower musicians to actually deal with the overdose dynamic and that's the tempo dynamic um, we've got other partners involved and we've got artists involved and it's really a very specific program designed to get artists through a period without having to rely on a drug dynamic that could potentially lead to overdose, which could lead to a dark side situation. So we're trying to put the bright side into the dark side, and we've got amazing support from artists and other, uh, other partners. And that was just launched recently, but we're about to take it to a whole nother level. And, and really, really proud of that one because it's a, it's a subject that a lot of people don't want to put on the center of the table in the music world. And we're saying, let's put it on the main stage and deal with it. Absolutely. I think that's so important, especially right now. As you said, the pandemic is affecting a lot of artists really negatively and a lot of reaching out for different coping mechanisms. And yeah. that can, you know, I mean, if we're being honest, it can result in overdoses and stuff. Yeah. And I think it's there isn't enough help out there yeah. for people like yeah. that, you know. And so the fact that you guys are stepping yeah. up and taking the initiative and saying, hey, yeah. we're going to just bypass everything that's been done so far yeah. and see what we can do to contribute. I think that's incredible. Yeah, and it's amazing. I've talked to some artists recently. We've got some just behind you guys who are going to be performing tonight. And, and the energy that they get from live crowds. And I think that, you know, they're starting to see that that they've all been in the creative cave for the last year and a bit and they're coming out and the, you know, everyone, the fans are loving what the artists are doing, but all of our amazing artists are saying, 
we get energized by the fan base. So I think that alone on its own can help get this bright side dynamic going. And uh, I mean, people are gonna be looking for experience and entertainment and artists are more than ready to go there and we're ready to support them. Yeah, hopefully everything is just on the up and up, you know yeah. what I mean? Out of the yeah. dark black abyss that was like yeah. the last two years, so. But interesting through that, I think we should also point out that there was that very real COVID crisis and then there was the COVID chaos. How do I put a mask on? Do I have enough toilet paper? But then something really interesting happened uh, about a year ago. Um, people wanted to play more guitar yeah. and they had time and whether you were a beginner and you wanted to learn, whether you were intermediate and you wanted to make progress with your guitar playing or your guitar collection, or whether you were an advanced player and you said, I'm going to take it to the next level. So the, the guitar industry um, all of a sudden had this COVID creative era where we're looking at new innovations, guitarists are playing more. And I would say that in the last 15 months, there have been more guitarists engaging and playing guitar than the last 15 years. Yeah. So our challenge going forward, all of us, what you guys do, what we do, what artists do, um, is to how do we keep that energy going? And so, you know, a lot of people come to Nashville to understandably take the energy from Music City. We got to put energy into it. Yeah. Our, our artists, our guitars, um, everything that's happening with the venues, and you're gonna see creativity coming out of that. How do we keep it going is the big challenge. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are really excited for that, you know what I mean? They've been all cooped up, just like you said, all this energy and the time to, and I know that it's been happening because I've been trying to buy things and yeah. everybody's out everywhere, yeah. you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because everybody finally had the time to sit down and really delve into their passions. So I think, you know, maybe this could be like a renaissance of sorts. Yeah, it could. I mean, in the words of Joni Mitchell, you don't know what you got till it's gone. And I think people have, uh, have realized that the power of music, whether it's through live whether it's through recording, whether it's through personally picking up an instrument and playing, there's really something special that happens with that. And I think the, the influence of music, um, whilst it wasn't live, um, was certainly when it's gone, you felt it, but when it comes back, you feel it again, even stronger. Totally. Well, thank you so much for joining me in Guitar World. We were Absolutely. very, very happy to be able to chat with you today. Yeah. Um, and I will be giving you guys a tour of Gibson Garage. Come yeah, back. you gotta check it out, explore play and get a chance to shop. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. Cool, take care. You too. Hey you guys, this is Sarah Longfield here with the Guitar World and Cesar at the Gibson Garage. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do here? Well, I'm the brand president. I uh, have responsibility over the Gibson Labs, sort of what we make. So we're working a lot of like what's the innovation in, in guitars going forward going to be. And so our research and development is called the Gibson Labs. Uh, we have a really solid product development team that is now working across our brands and categories. So from Gibson, Epiphone, Kramer, KRK, and then the categories of electric and acoustic and original, modern, historic, custom shop, all of that is in there. And then we got the brands. So we've been, as you know, over the last couple of years, working really hard at bringing the brands back and positioning them as the icons that they are paying tribute to the brands, looking at our 127 years of history and then leaning into the future with our strong brands. And then the marketing team, cultural influence, which, which is entertainment relations, Gibson TV, which we launched about two years ago. And then all of our social media activities, Gibson Gives, it's all part of that ecosystem of cultural influence and then the Omni experience, Omni channel, our direct connection with our fans that's what I do. <laughs> wow, <laughs> what a job. <laughs> um, can you tell me a little bit about what's new, like new models that might be out or news yeah. with some of your artists? Sure thing. What's new at, at Gibson is that we have a really good band, right? I mean, it's a great team. We've been able to attract really a, a solid group of individuals, you know, starting from JC, who's our CEO, bringing Mark Agnesi into the band and launching Gibson TV and now bringing all of that to life. Now everybody was asking, what's Mark going to do? Like, we don't need to explain it anymore. You can go to Gibson TV and watch it. And so from Mark to Matt Kaler on product development to Beth Height running that entire ecosystem of cultural influence. And then, you know, we've got our direct connections with our fans. We have a very large network of dealers that we work with. So I think the band that we put together is probably what I am most proud of. And then clearly it's been about bringing the artists back, connecting with artists across genres and across uh, generations from young to all the established icons. I literally just came back from 
a video and content shoot that we were doing with Jerry Contrell that is going to be part of the releases that are upcoming later in the year with him. Actually, we've got something relatively soon coming with him, which is the Les Paul Custom out of the Gibson Custom Shop Wino, which he made wow. so famous playing that, that dark red Les Paul Custom that he's been playing around the world. So, you know, that's happening live right now, but all the way from working with, you know, an amazing producer like Dave Cobb or working with our young artists like Jerry, um, Jerry James Nichols. And you're going to see later today the striking matches playing here. And, and uh, Dave Mustaine to Adam Jones and Clearly Slash and everybody that we're working with. It's, it's, a, it's been an incredible journey to start bringing all of the artists that made Gibson relevant back to Gibson and back into the family. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, do you have any news to share about the custom shop? Or I know you guys have like a repair service now and you have like- Yeah, the custom shop is, is interesting because we first set to achieve historical accurateness. And that's our DNA. You know, Gibson is kind of like the pinnacle of guitars and the custom shop is the pinnacle of Gibson. So it was very important to, for all of us as a team to reestablish the custom shop with a new historic collection. And that was about two years ago. And the evolution of that has been the Murphy Lab. Yeah, led which by is Tom in Murphy. house in Gibson Garage. You can check it out, you can go and visit it. And Tom will be here later. So Tom has now helped us get historical accurateness back into how we're aging instruments and developing a new technique with new chemical compositions for the nitro, which was basically just uh, reverse engineering the original 50s lacquer wow. and then developing the new techniques for aging. Cool. So all of that is what's, I would say, it's new, but it'll, it'll be a never ending journey of constant improvement of scanning. We've scanned um, over 30, recently over 30 59 bursts, for example. I mean, talk about the Holy Grail on the 59 scans that we did is what we're using to make clones. And so when somebody says, how do we know that we're getting an authentic or an accurate, let's say, representation of the 59 bursts? Well, well it's done through scans of over 30 recent scans of 59 bursts. And so that obsession will always continue. And what Tom Murphy has been doing has been incredible. And, um, and so now it's about, now that we have the Murphy Lab, it, it opens up the possibilities for all the artist recreations of the aged instruments. That's crazy. <laughs> Future. <laughs> Very cool, very cool. Is there anything else you'd like to touch on? Well, there's a couple of exciting things, and the one, the one that I am really proud of is the Epiphone Slash Collection, because it brings a new price point, you know, accessibility into your less, the Les Paul of your dreams, which might be the Appetite Burst or the November Burst, and, or the Gold Top, Vermilion Burst, Anaconda, and then also the Acoustics into the Epiphone brand, which is a great value proposition for somebody that says, you know, I have, I have 600 bucks, 700 bucks, and I, but I do, I want to have a slash less ball. Well, we're launching the Epiphone slash collection, which is, which is very exciting. That's awesome. Do you have a time frame on that? Like when? Yeah, it's coming out now at the end of the month. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we're, so check it out. That's yeah, awesome. It's coming. Uh, we're standing here mid July and uh, in about a week, the slash collection will be live. Wow. That's great to hear. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with me in Guitar World. We really appreciate getting the chance to talk to you. And you guys keep an eye out for all of these exciting things that are coming up. Um, and yeah, once again, I'm Sarah with Guitar World, and I'll see you around.